Prior to 1980, the Briar champion was determined by who finished first in the round robin. Once the winner-take-all championship tilt was instituted, drama quickly unfolded. Like in the 1981 Briar final, when Manitoba's Kerry Burtnick became the youngest skip to win the national title at just 22 years old, after scoring three in the last end to beat Northern Ontario's Al Hackner 5-4. In 1985, Hackner won his second Briar in one of the most dramatic moments in curling history. Hackner was forced to make a thin double takeout to stay alive, a shot that was seemingly impossible to execute at the time. The Iceman made it flawlessly, stunning opponent Pat Ryan, the commentators, and everybody in attendance. Ryan was just too heavy on his last stone in the extra, giving Hackner the improbable tankard victory. Few teams got the better of the famous Furby Four in the early 2000s, as Randy's boys from Alberta won four Briar titles in five years. Nova Scotia's Mark Dacey can be blamed for preventing the five-peat. Furby and Dacey squared off in the 2004 final in Saskatoon, a rematch of the previous year's final where Furby won in a rout. It was going down a similar path once again, with the Alberta team leading 8-4 after seven ends. Nova Scotia managed to put up a three spot in the eighth before forcing Alberta to settle for one in the ninth, giving them the hammer down two in the final end. Three-year run, Four, three brushes working frantically. It looks good, he's got it. The 2010 final in Halifax was Kevin Cooey's coming out party. After playing nine close ends, Cooey led Ontario's Glenn Howard by one without hammer, heading to the 10th. And they were in trouble in that end, with Cooey needing to make a very tough hack weight hit and roll to force Howard to one. The shot needed to be perfect for Alberta to have a chance. And it was. Howard drew for one, giving Cooey a shot at his first Canadian championship with a draw to the button in the extra end. Final stone. He Hold needs there. the button. Right. Kevin Cooey out really of the good. Savile Sports Watch Center room. in Edmonton. Lights good. Watch room. Lights good. good. Here, Blake McDonald. Here, here. Now Lights it's good. Carter Wright oh. on the right. Nolan Thiessen. They need oh. the button. Feeling. Needs yes. the button oh. for the Canadian Championship. Oh. Yes. Yes. Who's got the oh. button? Oh. Have they got oh. the button? Oh. Alberta's got yeah. the button and the Tim Hortons prize. Yeah. The story behind the 2015 Briar final was just as interesting as the game itself. The defending champs came into the week skipped by John Morris, but in an unprecedented move, gave the reins to Pat Simmons midweek after a slow start. The stunning swap worked as Simmons led them to the final against Brad Jacobs. The first four ends were blanks for the first time in Briar history. Things got heated up in the later stages with Team Canada taking three in the ninth before Northern Ontario sent the game to an extra end with a deuce in the 10th. It all came down to Simmons needing to bite the white to defend the Canadian Championship. Bite the white. Draw Just for the down. win. Line's good. Line's good. Team Canada. Looks light. Looks light. Looks a little light, <laughs> says Morris. Yeah, now yeah, it's up yeah. to Thiessen and Ryan. Brad Gushu had an opportunity to win his first Canadian championship in front of hometown fans in St. John's, Newfoundland. But he had to get past Kevin Cooey, the man who beat him in the Briar final the previous year. The Newfoundlanders went up 5-1 to one at the break before Cooey made an incredible shot to score three in the six to get right back in it. Like all great finals, it came down to the very last shot, with Gushu needing a draw to the eight foot to accomplish the dream. The right, and Nichols. Oh! The land and Nichols in the crowd. They need to get it. Full eight, and it's a big drag now. It's getting frosty. Full eight is what you need. Full eight is what you need to become 